Okay, so today we're gonna talk about compression. And um, when I when I usually talk to people about compression, they kind of start to glaze over. And I, to be honest, I just think that people really don't understand how important compression is. Um, to so far in this process, we've gone through all these steps of making this image look better and better and better, and making uh, every detail look important and. Um, what a waste all that is to go and just over compress your image and then show it off that way. So to me, compression is really important and I've spent a lot of time uh, learning it and trying to perfect it so that the image looks as good as possible when done, but it loads fast enough to where people aren't leaving your site or uh, whatever your particular web application is. Of course, if we were printing, um, there's really not a need to compress it. When we, in fact, we wouldn't compress it at all. We would just use this TIFF. So I'm going to go to my folder here, the number one, and PS or Photoshop. This was the image that uh, we worked with in the last video. We did all our finishing touches, and pretty much the the image is ready to go. The problem we have with this image uh, for this particular application is that it's 96 megabytes. You can see that here. And 96 megabytes is way too big to be uploading to the web. Uh, if you're trying to put that on a website or something of that nature, it'll never load. Your your visitors will get frustrated and they'll leave. So we're going to, of course, uh, compress this. And in the last video, I mentioned we don't do that in Photoshop. I think the most common thing that I see out there is people go to Photoshop and they go to File, Save for Web, and they compress it that way. And that's okay. Um, but believe it or not, even though Photoshop and Fireworks are are uh, designed by the same company. They actually use a different algorithm for compression and Fireworks is far better. Uh, you can get far better results using Fireworks when compressing an image than you can with Photoshop. So bear with me here. I think uh, I'll show you the value of using Fireworks as opposed to uh, Photoshop and the value of compressing correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna drag this image right into Fireworks. <coughs> Excuse me. So this will go ahead and uh, load up here in Fireworks and we're going to compress the image for the web um, in Fireworks as opposed to Photoshop. So when we click here we're going to see um, the image come up and in the bottom right hand corner we'll see the size of the image which is 8,000 by 4,000. Now for my particular application that is what I'm going to use so I'm not going to um, I'm not going to make this image any smaller, but for most of you, you probably would make it smaller. And you can do that by going to Modify, Canvas, Image Size, and you can make it something uh, more realistic for the web. Uh, I don't know what that'll be for you, but let's say 800, um, and that'll bring it to 800 by 400, and you could click OK. And again, I'm going to leave it the size it is, but for most of you, that's probably what you would do is resize it at this point. So we go ahead and we go to File and we go to image preview and I know this doesn't make any sense and it's completely different from what Photoshop does but this is how we compress in fireworks so file image preview and that'll bring up a preview for us here on the right side and on the left side you can see the defaulted format uh, was TIFF 24 and our file size here, this is 86 megabytes. Um, so TIFF 24 isn't really what we want to do. In this case, we want to go to JPEG. Uh, JPEG is the best um, format you're going to find for compression. So we're going to use JPEG. And we can see that's loading up. And it defaulted to a quality of 80%. And that's expressed here. 3.4 megabytes is the file size which is not bad, but my target range here is less than three megabytes, but above one megabyte. For the application that I'm using uh, this image for, I want the file size to be between one megabyte and three megabytes. So we do need to get it down a little bit. So I find the best way to kind of do this is to find something in here that has some detail, like this image in the background, um, or this poster will work for our purposes. So I'm just going to reposition this image so that I can see uh, these posters here and I'm going to start playing with the quality. And I really uh, watch the quality. I think um, from what I've seen out there, a lot of people just kind of pick a file size and compress it and whatever comes out, that's it. And that's the worst thing you can do. Um, because what you end up with, and I'm sure you've all seen this, is this over pixelated image. So we went through this whole process of making this image look great. And then in the very, very end, the last step, we just over pixelate it or over compress it. And we have an awful looking image. So 
Let's do this right. Let's uh, make this 100%. And I want to see what this image would look like at full quality or 100%. So I'm going to put a 100 in there, and I'm going to press the Enter key. And that will re -pre reprocess this preview on the right side and show us what the image would look like at 100%. So that's going to load up, and then what we're going to look at here is the file size here by my little beach ball. I know that's not what it's called, but we're going to go with that. Cancel that. So um, at 100%, that would take the image to 29 megabytes. Obviously too big, but what I'm looking at really is the detail. And the detail really didn't change from 100 to 80%. So I'll go ahead and put 80% in and press the tab key. And we'll watch as this is loading. We'll watch the details here. And it's just loaded, and I really don't see any difference at all. Um, I don't see a huge difference in the pixelation, <coughs> excuse me, um, here. So um, I'm going to actually push this a little farther so I can get into my range, which again was a 1 to 3 megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 70%, press tab, and this is going to load up. And again, I'm just watching to see how the quality of the image changes here. And I really didn't see much change at all, and this still looks uh, pretty good. If I were to put this on the internet and I saw this image on the internet, I would not say this is an image that's been over-compressed. Um, I am starting to see a little bit of pixelation in certain areas. For example, on the back of this chair here, you can just see the edges are starting to pixelate a little bit, but nothing uh, nothing too bad, nothing to write home about. So 70% gets me down to 2.2 megs, and that's perfect. Uh, that's the range that I wanted to be in, was between one and three, so this is splitting the difference. Uh, I got the file size that I'm looking for, and the quality looks okay. So again, this is JPEG, 70%, and it got my image to 2.2 megabytes up here that I'm looking. So that's perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and click the export key. And it's going to ask me at this point, I'm going to get the dialog box that prompts me to save it somewhere. So it's uh, JPEG. You can see the file extension here, which is perfect. That's what we want. We'll go to our folder that we've been using here. And of course, we're going to open up the number one folder again. And this time, I actually save it in the PS folder. And I know that's a little different. It breaks the logic I've been using. If you really want, you can click new folder and call this FW for fireworks or something. But I just don't think it's necessary. I, I actually just put it right inside my PS folder. And it's got a different extension. So I have my original TIFF and I'll have my JPEG so I can see the difference. So I'll click export and that's going to save it. And this little preview window will disappear as soon as that's done loading. And at this point, we can go ahead and actually just close up Fireworks. We don't need it anymore, and there's a little error that Adobe still hasn't fixed for CS6, but that's another story. So we'll go ahead and close this image, and I'm not going to save it. I already saved it, so I don't need to do it again. And I'm going to go ahead and quit Fireworks. So now we have our TIFF here, which is the image we generated, uh, the final image out of Photoshop. And we have our JPEG, our compressed version of the file. So if you remember, when we looked at the file size on the TIFF, it said 96 megabytes, which is way too large for the web. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and get info. And we can see it's 2.2 megabytes, much better, much more manageable, and it will load in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, for my visitors. So this is exactly what we wanted to do. Now just for demonstration, because um, I know some people out there are going to say, well Photoshop does the same thing and it does it just as well. I'm going to demonstrate that it doesn't. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to open it up in Fire Photoshop, excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that you would normally do in Photoshop, um, Photoshop's version of compressing if you will. And I'm going to go to File, I'm going to save for web, and it says it exceeds the size, which is normal. This is a huge image, so I'm going to say yes and continue. So this can take a moment when you're dealing with a huge, um, nearly 100 megabyte image, um, and that's okay. Right now it's hard to tell what the preview is. It's of the ceiling, so we'll just move this around, and we'll get the same thing going here so we can see the same thing. And there is our uh, preview that we we're looking at in fireworks. We can see the image size 8,000 by 4,000. It's already defaulted to JPEG and the quality is at 85 and the file size is down here and we can see the file size at 85 is 10.89 megabytes. So just to make it fair we'll use the same quality we used in, in uh, fireworks which was 70. So we'll change this number 
I think I just put in 77%, and that's not what we want. So we'll change that to a 70. There we go. So JPEG, 70%, same file size, 8,000 by 4,000. And you can see here the file size, if I go ahead and continue with this process, is 6.5 megs. Now, that's a marked difference between 2.2 megabytes in Fireworks and 6.5 megabytes if I already have used Photoshop for the same process. So just to demonstrate, if I get this down to where it was in the file size down to where it was in Fireworks, I'll go ahead and put in 50 here. Take a moment for that to load. So that's 50. Now we're down to 3.5, and you can definitely start to see some loss in the, the photo, yet we still haven't reached 2.2 megabytes like we did in Fireworks. So I'll go even more. So let's try uh, like 40% and see what that does. All right, so this is 40% quality, and we're still not there. We're at 2.7. And again, in fireworks, just to compare, we were at 70% quality, and we got down to 2.2 megabytes. Now, in Photoshop, we're down to 40, and we still haven't reached 2.2 megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and even go down even further here. And there's 30, and 30 gets us down to 2.2. But at 2.2, we've definitely started to get some pixelation going here. And it doesn't look anywhere near as good as it did in um, Fireworks. So I think I've proved my point at this point. The better, uh, by far, the better program for compression is Fireworks. So I know it's an extra step. You've got to open another program. But if you really want a sharp-looking image on the web that's not overly compressed, the best way to get that is Fireworks. So I hope that's been helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.